What's up, everybody? Just wanted to give a quick history on uh, my experience with this book. Back when I was about 10, 11, 12 years old, uh, you know, I started to get into punk rock and uh, writing anarchy signs everywhere and, you know, the whole bit. And one day my dad came to me with this book and uh, he started showing me the symbols inside and kind of just running the parallel of everything. And at the time, you know, I thought it was just a bunch of hooey. But uh, here we are 20 years later and I don't really think it's a bunch of hooey anymore. So uh, this book fell into my lap again a couple days ago and uh, I just thought, you know, the time's right. So uh, I haven't read it fully. So I thought, you know, what I was looking online because I was... Uh, I first got uh, exposed to the Book of Enoch thanks to a YouTube video, so I thought maybe I, you know, since that helped me a lot, maybe this book will help somebody else too. So uh, this is my first attempt. Hope you enjoy, and uh, hopefully there'll be more in the future. Thanks. Introduction. A deadly and evil cold wind is viciously blowing with magnum force across America and the globe. From whence does it come? The Bible reveals that Satan is the hellish creator of this rough and chilling air current. He is the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2.2 But the gale force winds now ripping through man's weakened defenses and shaking the very foundations of the world also have an earthly source. The New Age Movement The New Age is the last age. It will culminate in the emergence of an astonishingly powerful world teacher. The New Age False Messiah who will be worshipped by all the world as a supernatural god of forces. This man of sin, the beast with the number 666, will cause every man, woman, and child alive to take a mark, either on the forehead or the right hand. Only born-again Christians will be so bold as to refuse this mark. They will be put to death for their disobedience. Satan knows his days are numbered. He must do his evil work quickly while there is still time. For soon Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, will arrive on planet Earth. Like a mighty whirlwind from heaven, he will seize the kingdom promised him by the Father from the beginning and destroy the adversary and his legions of followers. God's will shall prevail. Furious and frustrated over his blazingly imminent end, Satan is gearing up for a monumental last-ditch effort to capture the souls of men and women. Raging psychopath, liar, and mass murderer that he is, Lucifer's mind is consumed with his mad ambition to take as many captives as possible with him into the dark pit. Into this fiery pit he will be cast by our Lord in a prison for a thousand years, awaiting for his final everlasting and doomed fate. The immediate future will be bleak for all of humanity. The Christian community will especially be in jeopardy as New Age leaders, incited by their demonic overlords, ruthlessly and methodically carry out their meticulously prepared plan for world domination. Satan has energized his followers with a special infusion of enthusiasm and ill will. The planet will experience uncontrollable spasms of violence and chaos. Widespread terror and rampant savagery will envelop the land, and blood will be shed on a massive scale. Those who believe in Jesus Christ will be the earliest victims of the coming days of horror and brutality. The stage is already set for the purge of Christian believers to begin in earnest. All that is needed is for the son of perdition, the Antichrist, to appear on the scene. And appear he will. Millions of New Agers, many in positions of great influence in politics, law, medicine, education, religion, have been tipped off by their demon spirit guide as to his imminent appearance. They have been discreetly told in advance that the dawning of the New Age Kingdom of the Beast is at hand. Very soon the one upon whom they have waited so long in eager participation will burst forth to grab the reins of world power and take dominion. Breathtaking events and extraordinary hardship and suffering will soon overtake mankind. The Bible foretold these events and told us that fear and shock will so grip men in these days of terror that their hearts will fail them. Things will be so dreadful that if it were not for the second coming of the Lord, the planet and every, man, every living person would be destroyed. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor shall ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh to be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Matthew 24, 21, 22 Things to come, the plan. 
In my book, Dark Secrets of the New Age, I expose the 13-point hidden plan of Satan to bring to pass in one world government and a one world religion headed by a New Age Messiah, or Christ in parentheses. Now in Mystery Mark of the New Age, I unveil startling facts revealing exactly how satanically inspired New Age leaders intend to successfully achieve these horrendous objectives. As I worked unceasingly over the past two and one half years probing into the strange, often impenetrable labyrinth that is the New Age, Satan came up against me repeatedly, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, 1 John 4.4. 4. Each time Satan came forth to stall my investigation and thwart my research, I called on God to bind the adversary. Without reservation, I give God all the glory for what is revealed here and praise Him for His faithfulness. Part 1, And He Causeth All to Receive a Mark Chapter 1, The Gathering Fury And they worshipped the dragon who gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is the beast? Who is able to make war with him, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him? Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world? Revelation 13, 4, 8. My army is ready for battle. My masters of wisdom and myself at the head. That battle will be fought for the continuance of man on this earth. Rest assured that my army shall triumph. Lord Matriah, the new age in quotations, Christ. Satan has a mark he wants to give you. If you take his mark, he will own your mind, your body, your spirit. He will be your father, and there will be no escape, no way out. You will be damned. However, you are not alone. Satan intends to give his mark to every man, woman, and child on the face of planet Earth. He will not be satisfied until you and your entire family receive his mark, and all your neighbors and mine have it. No, he won't be happy until all of humanity comes to worship him and him alone. Satan is well on the way to success in his goal of enslaving the world. To accomplish his dark objectives, he has reestablished his church, Mystery Babylon. Popularly called the New Age Movement, it is a perverse and diabolical institution founded on a web of lies and deceit. Spanning the globe and encompassing hundreds of millions of teachers and disciples, it has within its folds thousands of individual cults, churches, groups, and organizations. All oppose biblical Christianity. These many churches and groups constantly cooperate and collude. There is a conspiracy, a monstrous and hideous conspiracy. The conspirators themselves fearlessly call it an open conspiracy. One of its leaders, Jose Arguelles, mastermind of the worldwide harmonic convergence of August 16th, 17th of 1987, when several hundred thousand Satanists, pagans, and other ungodly people assembled to herald the dawning of a new age, has frankly stated, we're almost at the completion stage of, of bringing all the thousands of new age groups, organizations, and churches together. Arwellis says that the purpose of the 1987 harmonic convergence was to have 144,000 rainbow warriors chosen, called out worldwide, to become divine leaders of the emerging New Age Kingdom and planetary government. These are to be the elite who shall rule planet Earth. According to Orwellis, what happened at this huge cosmic festival was that New Age participants united and surrendered to the, entire, to the higher intelligence that rules this planet. Since our Bible identifies Satan as ruler of this world until Jesus Christ returns, we clearly see to whom these 144,000 rainbow warriors owe their unreserved loyalty and allegiance. The New Age Five-Year Plan We are also told by Jose Arwellis and others that the harmonic convergence kicked off a five-year plan during which the New Age is to gain incredible, irreversible momentum toward achieving its goal of world domination. Among the revealing aims, aims of this ambitious five-year plan, the New Age attends, intends to 1 bring all New Age groups, organizations, and churches together in unity and strength. 2. Establish a mediarchy composed of all television, radio, newspaper, and other media who work jointly to set up a propaganda environment favorable to the New Age. 3. Destruct our civilization, dismantling national governments and setting up a one world based on global units called bioregions. The United States of America will be dissolved as a national entity. 4. Purify the earth 
a hazy and vague concept which, when properly analyzed, clearly means the forcible establishment of a one-world religion and the abolishing of true biblical Christianity, Christian resistors will be killed. 5. Merge huma humanity with spirit guides and ascended masters from the invisible spirit world. Christians know this simply means the possession of human beings on a mass scale by demons from the pit of hell. 6. Exalt humanity to godhood. Citizens of the New Age Kingdom will be suddenly and magically capable of human, superhuman feats. The present weak and inferior Aryan race that populates the planet will give way to the new superior race of Aquarian man. Those unfit to join this new advanced race of super beings will be destroyed, possibly to be reincarnated later. 7. Seize and redistribute the world's resources and riches through the principle of sharing. 8. Bring in the New Age Messiah, or Christ, now in the wings anxiously awaiting the moment of international crisis when he, when he can assume the reins of world power. The Leaders of the New Age World Religion Satan quite obviously has big, big plans for man's future, but he cannot bring those plans to fruition without an extensive global network of dedicated and effective leaders. Does he in fact have this type of broad, powerful network of human collaborators? The answer, regrettably, is yes. Perhaps the most frightening aspect of the New Age is the world-class caliber of its leadership. Satan has been able to put together a formidable last days team comprised of many of the world's most persuasive and charismatic men and women. The New Age world religion has in its ranks prime ministers, diplomats, and statesmen, international bankers and financiers, university presidents, corporate chief executive officers of some of the world's largest multinational firms, and Oscar and Emmy award-winning actresses, Grammy award-winning musicians, renowned philosophers, educators, and scholars, publishers, best-selling authors, Christian theologians, and many, many more. The names of the most dedicated New Agers may well surprise you. Some are household names. Satan is no respecter of persons. He prides himself on taking advantage of false pride and inflated human egos. And he has been successful in snaring people whose fame and glamour bring in many unwitting disciples gullible enough to believe in a false religion simply because a glamorous movie starlet or politician whom they hero worship professes belief in the New Age. The New Age is not some kind of minor, weird, post-hippie movement. It is not simply a strange philosophy or fun and games taken up by a collection of flighty actresses and entertainers. This is neither a Shirley MacLaine phenomenon nor is it simply an example of mind games for the restless and affluent crowd. This is an unheralded, almost unimaginable, religious, political, economic, social, cultural, and scientific movement that has already dramatically changed this planet whether you know it or not. The New Age isn't on the way, it's here, now, as you read this book. Open your eyes and wake up, you have entered the twilight zone. But this time you can't make it go away by turning off the TV set. It's been pre-programmed to assault your brain non-stop, 24 hours a day, until Jesus returns. Did you catch those last three all-important words? If not, read them again and again and again. Has the whole world gone insane? No, God is still in control. But because of man's disobedience and rebellion, the world and mankind have entered the slimy era when Satan is, for a time, practically given free reign. This is why everywhere we turn, we find prominent people in all fields endorsing the New Age, and even immersing themselves in its philosophies and religious practices. To understand the incredible planetary transformation that has already taken place while so many of us were unaware, let's take a quick look at some of today's most famous and influential New Agers. The Great and Small in succeeding chapters of Mystery Mark of the New Age, I'll show how world-renowned financiers, corporation chieftains, diplomats, statesmen, and politicians are now combining their efforts with New Age religious leaders to usher in a New Age world order. The list of influential world leaders buying into the New Age lie and becoming its proselytizers grows daily. For example, consider J. Peter Grace, many times over a millionaire and head of W.R. Grace, a huge multinational corporation. Grace now conducts seminars at Windstar, a New Age community in Colorado founded by singer John Denver. Windstar actively pushes for global peace without Jesus Christ and for a one-world consciousness. 
Another multimillionaire, R.E. Ted Turner, owner of the cable news network broadcasting empire, and head of an abomination called the Better World Society, called for the election of a New Age president in 1988. In Great Britain, Prince Charles and Queen Elizabeth have become devotees of New Age holistic health philosophies. Meanwhile, Austria's president, Kurt Waldheim, former Secretary General of the United Nations, has long been a dedicated New Ager active in peace issues. The recent revelations that as a World War II army officer serving the Nazi regime, he had knowledge of and may have participated in war crimes merely augments the blackened character of this world leader. Such New Age politicians as Senator Claiborne Pell, Democrat Rhode Island, Senator Terry Sanford, Democrat North Carolina, and Mayors Kathy Whitmire of Houston and Don Fraser of Minneapolis are gaining momentum in their efforts to bring in a new era of political activism on behalf of their malevolent but often disguised agenda. One New Age disciple, former U.S. G Senator Gary Hart, was considered a shoo-in for the Democratic Party's nomination for president before the Donna Rice incident destroyed his candidacy. Senator Hart is well known among New Agers. He was their candidate, a man who believes and practices Native American, Indian shamanism, sorcery. Hart has publicly stated that he receives spiritual advice from an Indian woman teacher who delivers such advice daily to his office. Many very powerful men in government have become New Age advocates, men like U.S. Secretary of State George Shultz, who astonished a Washington, D.C. audience in 1987 with his comment that a New Age had already dawned and that a unified economic and financial world order, which he favors, is fast taking shape. West Germany's Willy Brandt, formerly the chancellor, the top political leader, of that powerful European nation is not only a member of the World Federalists, but has also lately devoted his life to the cause of the New Age worldview. <clears throat> Mikhail Gorbachev, the world's top New Age leader. However, the most significant and most frightening news story of our generation comes from the largest nation on Earth, the Soviet Union. There, an incredible New Age transformation is underway, termed glasnost by the world press and perestroika by its architect, Soviet Communist Party chief Mikhail Gorbachev. This revolution promises to be a key element in Satan's plan for one world, one world order led by an antichrist world leader. After closely studying the momentous events underway in Moscow and carefully analyzing this perestroika revolution, I have come to this astonishing conclusion. Mikhail Gorbachev, head of this bear of a superpower, perhaps the, the Earth's greatest military machine, is no longer an atheist. He has been converted to, new, to the New Age world religion. His is now the god of forces. Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev is unquestionably the world's foremost New Age teacher and leader. I will provide documentation of the startling new worldview, or paradigm shift, by the world's top communist official in chapter 13 of Mystery Mark of the New Age, and will present further definitive proof in a subsequent book soon to be published. The evidence is unshakable. Satan has accomplished a mighty feat in winning the heart and soul of the Soviet Union's highest official. The implications of this feat are mind-boggling to consider, but undeniably, everyone on earth will soon be eyewitness to profound decisions and international actions that will shock and surprise a world already inured to startling and unbelievable developments. <clears throat> they shall take the mark, willingly. Why, though, should we as Christians be either surprised or alarmed that the world's most powerful leaders and statesmen are turning their souls over to the devil in these, the last days? Revelation 13, 16 prophesies that the beast causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark. In Revelation 17, 15, we see that the mystery of Babylon, Satan's final end times religious system, will encompass peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Then in Revelation 17, 13, we discover that the Antichrist who is to come will reign supreme as a global dictator. The world's ten most powerful nation, national leaders will have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Yes, the beast will cause all, both small and great, to receive a mark. When we examine the world scene today, we discover an amazing truth. Billions of men, women, and children who inhabit planet Earth will not have to be tortured, beat over the head, and forced to take the mark. 
the leaders will not have to use the tactics of Hitler's jackbooted Gestapo, nor em employ any undesirable methods of suppression and terror. The vast majority will cheerfully and of their own free will and volition receive the mark. It will be the most remarkable of all developments in human history, an epoch in which the people themselves rise up as one and demand their rights to worship themselves as gods. They will all gladly want the mark to proudly signify their coming of age as gods. Winning the Masses As I've illustrated, political leaders in nations around this globe are now agitating for one world new age order, but they are certainly not encountering opposition from the average Joe or Jane. You, the man or woman on the street. The media convincingly report that this is a massive grassroots movement. The new age has infiltrated and captured strongholds in every sphere of society. Evidence of this abounds. For example, a surprising number of stockbrokers now consult astrological charts and visit tarot card readers. In every U.S. city, various groups meet nightly to watch videos of wise spirits speaking through channelers and to study such New Age Bibles as the Keys of Enoch, the Book of Uranthia, the Satanic Bible, A Course in Miracles, and the writings of Lucius Truss, Alice Bailey. Red Book, one of the most widely read women's magazines in America, last October carried an article telling women how to develop their psychic skills, read the auras, and use candles for occult purposes. <clears throat> Another popular magazine recently quoted a woman as saying, the new age stuff has offered me the freedom to believe that I want to believe as opposed to having to believe in Jesus, in the Bible, etc. Yet another woman stated, The New Age gives people tools through meditation and self-hypnosis or some of the reprogramming consciousness to help you harness your own power or tap into a power greater than yours. The New Age has made such tremendous inroads in, into society that such Fortune 500 companies as AT&T and IBM are now sending their executives to seminars to learn New Age concepts of visualization, thinking, and creativity and management. Holistic, New Age, medicine is booming, and New Age music is all the rage. Crystal powers are in. Popular rock star Julian Lennon, for example, sports a healing crystal earring. Actress Raquel Welch has introduced a yoga workout video for the New Age market, and sultry rock singer Tina, Tina Turner credits chanting with helping her achieve personal and professional success. A supermarket counter tabloid profiles talk show queen Oprah Winfrey is also crediting her professional success to her New Age spirituality. It is because of this God-centeredness that I am where I am, says Oprah proudly. It is also because I fear nothing and no one. Each morning I center myself to touch the God light I believe is in all of us. I get boundless energy from that. Most people involved in a New Age, especially Hollywood stars and other celebrities, are unsuspecting pawns in a cosmic chess game played by Satan. Tens of thousands of everyday people dabble in the occult and adopt, and adopt such New Age doctrines as reincarnation and communication with the spirit world and don't even recognize they are part of the New Age. They are unwitting accomplices of evil. <clears throat> the plan, spiritually rebuilding the Tower of Babel. But top New Age leaders know exactly what they're doing in deceiving the masses and they know whom they're serving. They know the plan and are dedicated to helping Lucifer succeed in implementing it. That plan, called the spiritual path of mankind by the highest echelons in the new age, is in reality Satan's design to carry out what he began millennia ago in ancient Babylon when God ruined his attempt to construct the Tower of Babel. As one new age authority has remarked, the spiritual path seems to have a special connection to the story of Babel since the builders of Shinar, like we of the new age, sought to build a tower to reach to the heavens. In our attempts, our attempts to transcend purely physical limitations, we too are reaching to the heavens. What part does the mark and other symbols play in this rebellious New Age effort to once again build a Tower of Babel? This same New Age leader frankly admits that in a bright new era, our ability to communicate is based on a shared acceptance of the signs, symbols, feelings, and phenomena of what, together, we accept as reality. He goes on to stress that the masses now, least likely to understand us through such manifestations as signs and symbols, will be able to explore and map the regions of fire. In plain language, the mark and other symbols are to become the universal picture language of mankind. 
simple but demonic form of communication that all can easily understand and share. Do the symbol of the mark to be physically and permanently inscribed on the forehead or right hand of every person on earth, all peoples will become one. As one, all will share in the dark blasphemies to be poured out on the deluded humanity by Satan and his legions. The Feast of the Beast. In the demonically inspired 1980 book, Michelle Remembers, the authors make mention of a feast of the beasts that was to take place in 1982. During this feast, fate, Satan was to issue his master plan to his earthly followers. I do not know if 1982 was a specific date when Satan's master plan, his blueprint for chaos and destruction, was first distributed. Certainly, the devil's antichrist spirit has been active throughout the Christian church age, rousing the world to be at enmity with the people of God. However, there is in existence today an operational military plan outlining, in the voluminous detail, how Satan intends to bring off his one world new age religion, kingdom, sorry. The new group of, a, of world servers is an organization, that's, organization that claims to be the custodians of the plan. The members of this group, jointly headquartered in London, New York, and Geneva, affirm their goal as the building of a new world order. They claim to be the enlightened ones. There is a plan for humanity, says the guidebook of the new group of world servers, given by the spiritual hierarchy of the planet to train the minds of men more rapidly and to build towards a more synthetic unity. These enlightened ones, the custodians of the plan, frankly admit to being a hidden body of men from around the globe, known by insiders simply as the Brotherhood. In effect, they profess to be the inner spiritual government of the planet. We need not accept at face value the contention of the new group of world servers that its members are the hidden, inner spiritual government of the planet. Indeed, there are numerous New Age groups making similar boasts, yet in analyzing the speeches and writings of this and all other New Age groups, I find striking similarities in doctrine and goal. This is understandable because every New Age cult, organization, and church of which I am aware has this single, unifying, common characteristic. They were all without exception, founded on the direct orders of a demon spirit. Satan's New Age groups come under many disguises, cosmetically concealed under many faces and with many a dark covering and mask. But they all have common roots, common origins, and a master in common. Therefore, when a major New Age event comes along, such as the Planetary Commission's annual World Healing Day, all of the thousands of networking interrelated New Age factions come together as one. And as one, they celebrate the Feast of the Beast, devour his master plan, and feed the disciples the poisonous scraps from the banquet table of the Beast. The Teachings of the Beast Satan's plan reveals that soon he will send his hand-picked and grouped world leader to a world hungry for his presence. In the interim, Satan works through his dark angels and their human disciples who are busily planting the seeds of chaos. As Lord Maitreya, the demon spirit whom Benjamin Cream and the Terra Center tout as Christ has expressed. My plan is that my teaching should precede my presence and prepare my way. My people will release it through their groups and group endeavor. I shall send my disciples to you, and they will show you the way, but you must act and follow our plan. What is this teaching of the beast that has already been given to mankind to prepare the way for Satan's false Christ? Undoubtedly, you have already heard much about this teaching. Even some of the better-known Christian evangelists are preaching it to their flocks. Its major tenets have been announced and taught extensively from pulpits, platforms, and on television airways in every nation on earth. Here, listed below, are the seven major teachings of the New Age. A study of the Bible reveals these same false teachings to be the seven marks of Mystery Babylon, Satan's last day's religion. 1. Jesus was not and is not the only Christ, nor is he God. 2. God, in quotations, is impersonal, cosmic, a god of energy forces. 3. Man is himself God, for he consists of and is the creator of the forces. Man already exercises the powers inherent in this divinity and needs only to awaken to this fact. 4. Man should seek and accept spiritual instruction and direction directly from the spirit world. 5. All religions and religious teachings lead to the same goal. All are equally of merit. 6. The ancient wisdom of Babylon, Egypt, and Greece, not the Bible, is the basis of all truth. 
7. Sin and evil do not exist. Peace and love are the ultimate realities. The teachers of the New Age world religion firmly believe that these teachings will continue to conquer all obstacles in their paths. The New Age kingdom will be, says Matthew Fox, the heretical Catholic priest whose life is totally devoted to, devoted to his New Age nature worship ministry. Fox preaches that there is coming a new Pentecost, a new creation, a spiritual awakening that all of the world's religions might share in. This optimistic view is shared by other New Age leaders. Their hellish master has told them he will prevail over the true God, and they foolishly believe him. Satan's plan envisions the whole world undergoing a fiery time of crisis and chaos. The actual takeover of planet Earth will come as a result of this crisis. Out of crisis, chaos, and death will emerge the New Jerusalem, populated only by New Age gods whose foreheads and hands bear the mark of their master and lord. According to New Age leaders, the New Jerusalem will be the culmination of the evolutionary process. We live in, we live in urgent yet wonderful times. It is proving to be a very difficult transition. A time of deep spiritual crisis with grave dangers but with unique opportunities for evolutionary progress. To speed up this evolutionary process and more rapidly usher in the New Age Kingdom, Satan and his demons have founded thousands of cults, churches, and organizations. The humans who head these groups are cued by demons so that they recognize one another. Already there are a number, a number of groups. World Servers for the New Age, Planet Stewards, Warriors of the Rainbow, Children of the Dawn, etc., who envision a unification of individual beings from all parts of the planet as an evolutionary nucleus. The parts are being called together. They will intuitively recognize one another. Why are the leaders of the New Age being joined together at this significant time period in man's long history? Jan John Randolph Price gives us the unabashed answer. Now, he explains by unifying our efforts, we can co-create the future according to divine plan. The unmovable obstacle, Christianity. There is, however, one major obstacle to the plan of the New Age to rebuild the earth. That unmovable obstacle is the body of Christ, the combined faith of true Christian believers. What's more, we know from Bible prophecy 2 Thessians 2.7 that the Holy Spirit now restrains the devil from launching his final all-out assault. But the Holy Spirit of God will one day soon remove the barriers and give the devil free, free reign to do his works of terror. Satan sorely decises Christian believers, for we are the light of the world, human mirrors reflecting the greater light that shines from above. Over the centuries, Satan has sent wave after wave of persecution on God's people, and things will not get any, any better as we head for the ultimate showdown, the final conflict between good and evil. Yes, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 2 Timothy 3, 12, 13 The awful truth is that Christians who refuse to take the mark of the beast are marked, but in a much different way. They are marked for extinction by New Age forces. Satan has already passed sentence. The, ver the verdict is guilty. The crime, serving Jesus Christ. The penalty is removable, is removal from earth death. But the Christian knows who ultimately has jurisdiction over his life. Almighty God promises life, eternal life. With Jesus Christ in a gloriously blissful existence that he has no ending for those who accept the free gift of his son. Satan has succeeded in convincing the new age masses that this free gift of God is an illusion. His lie is that mankind must depend on its own resources and put together a new man-centered religion. In a symposium in Asheville, North Carolina with the theme toward a global society, New Age globalist leader Donald Keyes trumpeted to an ecstatic audience. We're at the final eight stage now of putting it all together. It's a new religion called networking. The New Age wave is now entering social change. Unfortunately, Keyes complained, we're also experiencing the beginning of backlash. From whom? Christians. Fundamentalist Christians who believe only in Jesus as Lord and the Bible as his word. Key scornfully called such people pre-humanistic and anti-humanistic. With these Neanderthal types around, Key suggested, the New Age world is awfully hard to govern. What is the solution? Key said it would be necessary to have the services of a great one world leader. 
Don't anyone think for a moment that you can run a planet without a head. These folks who think that they're going to be able to get off with some kind of sloppy do-your-own relationships among nations, just casually checking in now and then, have got to think again. This planet has to be managed. <clears throat> Things could get a little messy, Keys implies. Once this New Age world leader assumes power, for one thing, there are these dangerous Christian fundamentalists who pose a problem. When it comes to running a world or taking people into a new age, it ain't neat. There's another element here. Let's call them AH. These are difficult cookies because they are anti-humanistic. They're rather dangerous. They do pose a problem. The Christian as an outcast. We may be difficult cookies, as Keyes puts it, but Christians sadly are an incredibly small minority today. New Age leaders have been able to bring together and unite every false religion and cult on earth. Hindus, Buddhists, Satanists, witches, all are welcome and are joining in New Age unity. Only Bible-believing Christians are excluded. We are anathema. We are pariahs. Unity is everything to the New Ager, a unity that denies the exclusiveness or unique nature of God. Jawal Kul, the demon Tibetan master who discipled Alice Bailey, and so many other New Age leaders taught that Christians were separative and evil and, and evil and are the stumbling block to world unity. His appealing but deceptive plea is as follows. Let us drop our antagonisms and our social and religious differences and think in terms of one family. Cole, whom the Theos Theosophical Society credits, credits as their founding father, provides the rationale for giving all of mankind a unifying mark and for persecuting these separatish, separatitionists and, re and rebels who refuse it. Through their common use of the mark, plainly etched in the forehead or right hand, all who worship the beast will experience a sense in unity and fellowship. As Cole explains, a new commandment I give you can be summed up in inclusiveness, the hallmark of the new age. The universal spirit, identification, oneness with all your fellow men. The New Age leadership has flatly stated that in the coming New Age kingdom, Christians will have to change their lifestyles and their entire way of thinking and become good Aquarians, or else. Barbara, Barbara Marx Hubbard has threatened, people will either change or die, that is the choice. Foster Bailey of the Lucius Trust further reinforces this dogmatic stance. The new civilization in Aquarius will inevitably develop a quality appropriate to what we consider most valuable. Our children and men will have to live with the New Age standards. Those who do not will end up as irreconcilable outcasts. Bailey stridently points out that in the New Age theology, separateness is considered heresy. It is the root cause of all the world's trouble. Refusal to unify, to become part of the Great Brotherhood, Bailey argues, is an act of heresy against the divine plan. Global Mind Link, a preview of the coming world unity. World unity devoid of Jesus Christ and his followers is at the very threshold of being attained. On December 31st, 1987, the New Age leadership was reportedly able to marshal a colossal worldwide force of 875 million people to participate in a single event. Global Mind Link, also called Global Healing Day, on that day, these hundreds of millions of New Agers knelt to mediate, meditate, and invoke their demon spirits and inner gods, their master or holy self, to usher in a New Age kingdom on earth led by a New Age Messiah or Christ. John Randolph Price, whose networking group, the Planetary Commission, organized this huge planetary demon fest, subsequently published this thought-provoking proclamation for all New Age disciples. To the people and organizations in the 82 countries, principalities, dependencies who shared their light, love, and spiritual consciousness for healing and harmonizing of planet Earth, we say to you, you are the master builders of the new civilization, and our work shall not be in vain. A giant energy field, a massive thought form has been created. A unified consciousness of spiritually minded light workers has emerged which is even now transmuting the negative energy and forming a critical mass of positive good for this world. But we, not, we cannot be complacent. In the months left until the third global mind link, mind link on December 31st, 1988, Leach reached in deeply to reveal the master self in consciousness and then reach out to the far corners of the earth. At that precious moment in time to embrace in mind the holy self of each individual, 
forming a glorious force field through which a new world will be revealed. Think of it. 82 countries, 875 billion people unified in purpose, all meditating together simultaneously, calling up the blackest forces from hell to be made manifest. These people see themselves as positive, as good, because their common father, Lucifer, has twisted and warped their minds to believe the lie. Millions of New Agers want to be powerful gods. They're willing to take a mark if necessary to become gods, and they'll kill anyone that gets in their way. If their master tells them that such an act is for the positive good. How many Christians today are willing to refuse the mark even if it means torture and certain death? Jesus told us that men would someday put his disciples to death and think they were doing us God a service. Would you choose to go to your death rather than take the mark? How many Christians will endure to the end? Certainly we cannot ma imagine a number as high as 875 million. Remember, only Noah and his family survived the flood. Only Lot and his loved ones escaped the flaming catastrophe of Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus cautioned that his followers would be few. Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be who go in that way. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Matthew 7, 13, 14. The New Age comes preaching another gospel. Wide is the way, and many there are that shall find it. Only renegades are excluded from the kingdom, Christian renegades. The Lure of the Mark As I've intimated, after the New Age world religion of the Antichrist fully encompasses the earth, all the world's population, except the few despised Christian holdouts, will believe in the New Age gospel. This is a gospel that comes in fancy and shiny, tinselated wrappings. It is a positive earthbound gospel of prosperity, peace, and love, seduct seductively pointing the way to personal power and one's own divinity. The mark will come to be seen as the capstone of the new religion. Everyone will want it. Anyone who refuses it will be thought of as a weirdo, a rebel. Eventually, the world, the whole world under the hypnotic, mesmerizing spell of the greatest occult magician who has ever lived, will hold the Christian without the mark as a disgusting example of, a, of human rot. Seeing an outcast Christian without the mark will actually arouse anger and resentment in the heart of the New Age believer. The stage will be set for a holocaust. Chapter 2 The Mark And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand, or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Revelations 13, 16, 17. The larger triangle was quite straight, delicately incised in just the outer few skin layers as if by the mark of a skilled master surgeon. They had changed me, done something to me. I could sense it clearly that night, but I could not articulate it. Later I thought that they were taming me. Whitley Streber, Communion. All eyes fastened on, fastened on Richard as he excitedly entered the room. The door closed and a young man looked at the astonishing scene that lay before him. He observed that there were seven men in all, sitting in a circle. Their eyes fixed on his and the blood quickly rushed to Richard's face. Oh no, he thought. The time had come. It was his turn to receive the mark. We have met here for a specific purpose, Richard. A man obviously the leader said in a reverent tone. These, my brothers in Christ, have come from distant places to officiate at this ceremony for which you have been summoned. The one concerning the name which has been given you, for did not our brother Dr. White tell you that soon it would be made a part of your body? A sinking fear took hold of Richard. He blanched and felt a little faint. Why do you tremble, Richard? These things must be endured because they are essential. The name the Lord has ordained unto you will be cut into your skin, and the scar tissue will be pigmented so it will be brightly legible for the rest of your life. The boy held perfectly still without being instructed to do so even as he felt the knife cutting into him. He perspired profusely. The pain was unexpectedly intense and he was all the more squeamish as he felt the blood running down the side of his leg. Finally, the leader announced, it's done. Now things have come to pass which are required of this date according to prophecy. You, Richard, possess the key of David, by which your continued works are given authority. Now to the extent that you are with us, we are with you. Give thanks to Christ who guides us all. 
I did not make up this story. It is the account of a New Age disciple and is recording in his best-selling book, The Ultimate Frontier. It is not, however, the sole account of a New Ager receiving the mark of the beast, and will certainly not be the last. The Bible tells us as part of Satan's grand design for world domination, he has prepared a mark that will be given every man, woman, and child on earth. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on the right hand, or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Revelations 13, 16, 17. After many months of intensive study and exhaustive research of the New Age world religion, its leaders, and their intentions, I have been able, with the help of Almighty God, to uncover a plot on the part of Satan of truly monstrous proportions. Shockingly precise and brutally frank in its aims, the dark dimensions of this plot stagger the imagination. The kingdom of the Antichrist is at hand, make no mistake about it. And soon, very soon, the whole world will feel the savage impact of the beast with the fearful number 666. God alone can stop the onslaught of the New Age beast, but in his holy Bible, he has given us his prophecy of what is to happen. God is always true to his word, and so we can rely on the revelations given to us in Bible prophecy. In fact, Bible prophecy is considered so important by the Lord that he promised that those who read or hear and believe in his prophecies will receive a special blessing. Blessed is he that readeth, and that they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is at hand. Revelation 1.3 The frightening thing about the New Age plan of Satan is that its provisions exactly parallel the events and occurrences prophesied in the Bible. Jesus himself gave us a checklist of things that would occur just before his second coming. For example, Christ forecast days of bloodshed and sorrow during which Christians would be terribly persecuted. Then shall they deliver, deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Matthew 24, 9 Jesus also warned that in that day many will say in their heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and so continue to do evil, bringing destruction and judgment down on themselves. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 24, 44-51 Likewise, Peter prophesied that in the last days, even as the return of the Lord Jesus Christ drew near, liars would multiply and people would sneer at anyone who expressed confidence in the Lord's imminent return. There shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. 2 Peter 3, 3, 4 Today we are inundated with scoffers. We even find within the Christian community prominent evangelists and pastors who denied the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Some even say that Jesus is unable to appear. They say that he is held in the heavens until mankind has cleaned up its own act and brought in the kingdom. The blasphemous doctrine attempts to make a mockery of scripture and a liar of Jesus Christ. These scoffers merely bring to pass Peter's prophecy of their unseemly conduct. Moreover, Peter described what would be the eventual fate of these unbelievers in God's word. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. 2 Peter 2.12 Jesus instructed us to watch for the signs of his coming and to be ready. We are not to know the exact hour, but, said our Lord, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Matthew 24, 33. The beast is at our doors. Soon he will beat down the doors and take us by force unless we first prepare and are ready. This book will help you prepare. It is a re revealing expose of the hidden mysteries that the New Age has so far opened up to only a few. Here in all its dark grotesque ugliness is the plan of the New Age to initiate every person into the mystery of iniquity. Unless you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you will take the mark of the beast and thereby enter a blood covenant with Lucifer. You cannot escape, for the Bible makes clear that in the last days a great delusion will fall on everyone who has rejected the Lord. You will believe the lie. You will accept the mark. You will become one of the damned. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 
2 Thessians 2 11, 12. Step by step, Satan's battle plan. The, the devil has mapped out a detailed battle plan and has passed it on to his demons and those elite men and women who have chosen as leaders of the new age. This battle plan includes the following broad goals. 1. Christianity will be discredited and Christians will be forever will be become accursed. They are to be branded an ignorant and inferior human species. 2. A planetary crisis will be precip precipitated by Satan's human world leaders. Out of this crisis will come the opportunity for the New Age Kingdom to be realized. 3. A great world leader and statesman will then appear to bring order to chaos. He will be Satan's handpicked man, the beast or antichrist with the number 666. 4. New Age leaders, especially those who control the world's TV and radio broadcast media will mount a tremendously powerful campaign on behalf of this world leader, causing all the world to believe in his perfection and infallibility. 5. After assuming the reins of power, the great world leaders will usher in a period of universal peace and prosperity. His magnetism and charisma will enable him to establish himself at the helm of a one world government, one world economy, and a one world new age religion. 6. Consolidating all power and might, the great world leaders will finger Christians and Jews as public enemies, who are a constant danger to world peace, justice, and sharing. The arrest and imprisonment of Christians will commence. All the world will applaud their persecution. 7. Every man, woman, and child who has not yet been initiated into the mystery of iniquity will take a mark and receive the Luciferic initiation. They will then discover the awful truth, but it will be far too late. Their fate will have been sealed. 8. All who re refuse the mark and the Luciferic initiation and who refuse to worship the image of the beast will be put to death. 9. The whole world will be deluged with Satan's demons, who will eagerly and hungrily possess human bodies. 10. After the whole world has been conquered, Satan's final treacherous act will be to assault the very gates of heaven. Will Satan's evil plan succeed? The Bible reveals that all of the devil's plan, except step number 10, will substantially succeed. There will be a one world government under direct authority of the Antichrist. There will be horrible persecution of Christians, and the entire world will be forced to receive the mark of the beast, or be killed. But in attempting step number 10, the foolhardy assault on God's throne, Satan will have made a grave mistake. His mad lust for absolute power will have driven him to ultimate destruction. The scriptures testify that God's wrath will fall on the creator of evil and on planet Earth. The Lord will scourge the legions who follow Satan, and he will cast the devil and his followers, human and demon, into the fiery pit. Then all the world will know that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. See Revelation 19 through 22. Would God really be so cruel as to send millions to an everlasting hell? This question is often, is often asked by Christians, by people who seek to discredit the Bible, and by those eager to avoid responsibility for the consequences of their own actions and decisions. God says He will do it, and He will. He is sovereign. His decisions are always just. For He saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Romans 9.15 God would prefer that no one perish. Therefore, he sent his own son, Jesus, to die in our place for our sins. Those who rebel against him and make light of Jesus' sacrifice for their sins condemn themselves. But God is merciful. His provision for salvation is simple yet profound. That if thou conf shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.9 God will have mercy on whoever comes to him with a repentant heart and a sincere belief in his Son, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. For these he offers protection and the gift of eternal life. But if you reject God's mercy and his unfathomable gift, you will die in your sins. What's more, you will have chosen to serve your father, Satan. He will then have the right to do to you whatsoever he will. Call it unfair. Call it unjust. Call it whatever you wish. But all of us must choose the master whom we will serve. We are not our own gods, regardless of what the New Age teaches. Who, then, is your master? We do have a right. Does Satan really have the right to possess you and do with you whatever horrible things he wishes? 
He does if you are not one of God's adopted children. Whitley Strieber discovered, to his utter horror, the startling truth. In his number one best-selling non-fiction book, Communion, he recounts his abduction by strange beings from what appeared to be a huge crystal-like UFO. Now frankly, I do not believe most UFO stories I read or hear, but in Strieber's case, the facts seem to bear out that he did in fact experience, experience what he describes. Yet I hasten to say that what Strieber experienced was in reality a demonic vision or apparition rather than a UFO contact. Satan is a master at implanting images and visions in the minds of those he possesses, and Strieber's account accords with that of a man totally possessed by demons who cause him to remember and to retell to millions his incredible tale. Strieber makes clear in his book that though he was raised a Catholic, he is not a born-again Christian. At the same time, he admits to a long-standing interest in the occult, in Eastern religions, and in mysticism and New Age consciousness. He also was fascinated with the study of the ancient history of Babylon, Egypt, and Greece. Prior to communion, Strieber was the best-selling author of bloodthirsty horror novels. These raw experiences left him vulnerable and defenseless to the demonic attack that was to later envelop him. Three fascinating yet horrifying things happened to Whitley Strieber that awful night in his isolated home in upstate New York. First, he claims that while held captive by the aliens, he underwent what can only be interpreted as a sexual initiation by an alluring, yet despicable-looking female demon. Strieber evidently believes that being may actually have been Ishtar, the mother goddess of ancient Babylon. See Revelation 17. The closest thing I have been able to find to an unadorned image of this goddess being is not from some modern science fiction movie. It is rather the ages of old glaring face of Ishtar. Paint her eyes entirely black, remove her hair. There is my image as it hangs before me now in my mind's eye, the ancient and terrible one, the bringer of wisdom, the ruthless questioner. Strieber, New Ager that he is, asked, Do my memories come from my own life or from other lives lived long ago in the shadowy temples where the gray goddess reigned? Perhaps the visitors are gods. Maybe they created us. Why gods? For one thing, Strieber notes that while inside a large circular room of the craft in which he was held prisoner, the beings told him that others that were there were chosen ones. One captive, a woman in a white floral pattern dress, was apparently taken in by their announcement. Praise the Lord, she shouted as she was told what to her was the good news that she was chosen. Second, Strieber recalls that as he struggled, cried, and screamed to his captors, You have no right to do this to me. I am a human being. He was confronted with a firm rebuttal from this mother goddess who was the leader of the other UFO aliens. Staring at him with eyes that reached to the very core of his being, she sternly replied, We do have a right. Of course they do have a right. Satan can do any hideous and frightening thing he desires to his children. He is the judge and jury, the torturer, the executioner. Rebels against the true God are, as Whiteley Strieber found out, totally under Satan's control. Only the children of God are exempt from his lawlessness. Third, we read in communion that Strieber subsequently woke up to discover etched on his arm a mark. When I got up the next morning, I found two little triangles inscribed on my left forearm. I don't know what happened, and there is no way at all to explain the event in a conventional manner. The larger triangle was quite straight, delicately incised in just the outer few skin layers as if by the work of a skilled master surgeon. The other triangle, very tiny, was pointing at the larger one. The triangle is a satanic symbol, the implications of which I'll discuss in some great detail in a later chapter. The point here is this. New Ager Whitley Strieber was apparently initiated and left with the mark of that Luciferic initiation. We know from Bible prophecy that once the Antichrist is in firm control of all the world's churches and religions, he will require every individual to take a mark either on the hand or the forehead. By his account, Strieber's mark was on his forearm. It is likely then that Strieber's experience is a prelude or preliminary dress rehearsal to the type of his initiations that are to come in the days of head. The Mark, a badge of distinction. It is important to understand how the mark is to be received. The word mark in the Bible comes from the Greek word shiragma, a noun that denotes a graven image or stamp that mars the skin. Dr. Spiros Zidiatis, one of the world's greatest Greek Bible scholars, 
has told me that in Revelation 13, where the mark of the beast is discussed, the word mark literally means to cut into the body, to physically etch or carve. Such a mark would undoubtedly be observable to the eye and not hidden. There has been a lot of speculation about the mark recently with the invention of, a new, of new computer microchips so tiny that they can be programmed with numbers and other information and be inserted under the surface of the skin. There have also been concerned that the laser barcode now in common use at check out, checkout counters is the precursor to the mark and that everyone may someday be given a laser barcode on their forehead or hand with the number of the beast. Could a microchip be programmed with the number of the beast and be inserted under a program's skin, a person's skin? And what of the barcode? Could the laser be used to brand people with the mark? In light of the meaning of the biblical word mark as used in Revelation 13, I do not see this as a viable possibility. For one thing, I believe the coming New Age world leader will promote the mark as a spiritual status symbol that people will proudly covet. It will be a mark of distinction. Like the commercial for a well-known credit card says, you wouldn't want to leave home without it. To hide or somehow make the mark indistinguishable would defeat its purpose. Satan will undoubtedly get a perverse thrill from seeing men, women, and children proudly display his mark. Much like a haughty and proud Texas rancher who looks out over at the thousands of cattle grazing on his lands marked with his brand, the devil can point to the billions who have been branded for his name's sake. Pompously he will exult. These are mine. The Lord cannot have them. The Afterglow a growing, a growing number of New Agers have already undergone an initiation ceremony and accepted the mark. They almost universally report that although they approach the ceremony with dread and foreboding, after it is over, after they have the mark, these extreme feelings of fear magically vanish. They are replaced by feelings of great joy, of warmth, of serenity, and peacefulness. Most report that the newly acquired mark makes them feel unique and special, even chosen. After the encounter, I discovered that the lines on the palm of my right hand have been altered, and a portion of them now formed a six-pointed star about an inch in circumference. It terrified me when I first spotted it, for I knew I was no longer looking at my own palm. But as time went on, I learned to accept the changes within my body, and I really felt quite special. These feelings, voiced by so many who have received a Luciferic initiation, are significant. They point to two inescapable facts. One, the initiate recognizes beforehand that he is coming into close contact with dark evil forces and a spirit of fear engulfs him. And two, after the initiation is over and Satan's demons have taken residence inside the individual, his mind is patently altered. This is what New Agers call the Kundalini, or Skaktapat, experience technically termed a paradigm worldview shift christians know it as demon possession as a result the person's thoughts and beliefs take on those of the demons who inhabit his mind he is thus made to feel special and chosen no longer does he feel the darkness and evil he hungrily longs for it embraces it befriends it he is consumed with satanic bliss what the bible says about the mark it is undeniable that the Bible prohibits God's people from making any graven mark on their forehead or on their hand or anywhere else on their body. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19.28 This restriction in Leviticus was a warning against pagan practices. During religious festivals and funerals, pagan people would often inflict wounds on themselves to show reverence to the gods or out of grief for a dead loved one. God therefore let his people know that he alone is Lord and that the dead are his business. God's commandment was clear, marking, that is, etching or cutting and disfigurement of one's body is not to be practiced for any reason. Also see Leviticus 21.5. Throughout the centuries, Satan worshippers and other pagans have used marks on their body, especially on the forehead and hand, to identify themselves with their god or goddess or false teachings. Historians and symbology experts say that the tattooing of the body and face originally began as a form of initiation and sacred worship with the ancient Egyptians who use, who use hieroglyphic characters. In the days of the early church, the Roman and Greek worship of Mithra was a strong competitor to Christianity. Adherents of the Mithra mystery religion were given strenuous initiation rituals which included bird and animal sacrifices as well as mental and physical tests of strength. 
Symbology was employed to condition the minds of the initiate. Tertullian records that the Mithra and neophyte, or candidate, would be given a secret name, the name of the beast, followed by a mark on the forehead. The mark consisted of being signed on the forehead with a hot iron. This event was followed by ecstatic dancing in a symbolic circle, offerings of, in of incense, riotous drinking, and ritual free sex. The mark in today's occult explosion. Current fascination with the mark among many New Age believers most certainly is inspired by Satan. The Western world and America are in a grip of a tidal wave of Satanism and witchcraft. There is an occult explosion in the land, its flames being fanned by New Age teachers and Eastern religious influences that have gained popular followings. The Satanic Bible and other patently occult books are now among the top-selling books at secular retail bookstores. The bookstore chains, Walden Books, B. Dalton, and so forth, have even created special sections in their stores for such books to meet public demand. In many of these books, we discover references to the mark of Satan. An example is the Complete Book of Magic and Witchcraft, published in a popular paperback edition by New American Library, one of America's largest publishers. In this horror guide, in addition to learning how to perform spells, charms, and incantations, and how to conduct rites and ceremonies of Satanism and witchcraft, such as copulation with the devil, we are told all about the witch's mark. This mark might be identical with the devil's mark, a small sign placed upon her by the devil as a sign of his ownership. Both marks might be various sizes, colors, shapes, and locations. Who can escape the mark? Revelation 17 tells us that Satan's last days, one world religious system, will be a revival of mystery of Babylon. The Roman and Greek worship of Mithra emanated from Babylon. Now today as we near the dawning of the 21st century, the religion of Babylon and the practices of the Mithra cult are being restored. The New Age Antichrist, or Beast, will require all to take the mark as a sign of initiation, or acceptance, of unbiblical doctrines and Lucifer as Lord. Who can escape the mark of the Beast? Apparently everyone who refuses the mark will be arrested as an enemy of the state and summarily executed. The mark will certainly be representative and signify the image of the Beast. We find that any who will not worship this image will be killed. And he hath power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast, beast should both speak, and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Revelations 13.15 Even if a person should hide out to evade going to a new age temple or church to be initiated, he will eventually be caught and punished. The Bible reveals that the enforcement will be aided by a new law that forbids the citizenry to sell to or buy anything from any person who has not received the mark. And no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Revelations 13.17 Death will be the penalty for anyone refusing the mark, so those who stand up for the Lord in the coming fearful days will suffer tremendously. Yet Jesus himself taught us not to fear him who can kill the body, but rather to fear him who has power to kill the soul. Only God has the keys of eternal life and death. God's wrath on those who take the mark. In studying Bible prophecy, we glimpse the horrendous consequences that result when God's law against receiving the mark is violated. The scriptures pronounce this chilling sentence on all who receive the mark. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Revelations 14, 9, 10. Revelation 14, 11 also reveals the frightening eternal fate of those who take the mark. They will be tormented forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Clearly, it is a terrible thing in the sight of God to reject his son Jesus Christ and is said instead to accept the mark of the beast. Chapter 3 Mystery Mark of the New Age Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they, they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 1 John 4 1 Let the disciple learn to use the hand in service. Let him see the mark of the messenger, and let him learn to see with the eye which one which looks out from between the two. Joel Cole, the demon, Tibetan master. 
Does the New Age leadership propose to give all of mankind a mark to signify agreement with New Age occultism? My research shows conclusively that this is the case. An incredible campaign is now underway to condition humanity and prepare every person on earth to receive the mark of the New Age beast. We see this campaign in operation in every aspect of society, especially in the printed media, on television, in the movies, and in public schools. In Chapter 5, I'll provide graphic and control incontrovertible proof that an explosion of occultic symbols are invading our culture and our minds of and our minds. I believe that one or more of these symbols will be the one used by the beast as his mark. It is a proven fact that the New Age is a religion based on occult symbology. The key question, however, is this. Is there proof that the New Age advocates advocates the taking of the mark? The answer? Yes and yes again. The use of a mark is becoming a more frequent teaching with each passing day as New Age leaders build a theological and ritualistic foundation needed before the taking of the mark can someday enjoy universal acceptance. Recently in America's largest New Age bookstore, I purchased a remarkable book that caught my eye with its frank title, The Mark. What also caught my eye was the color of its cover, purple, which has dark spiritual meaning and a cold doctrine. Prominently featured on the cover was a symbol a small circle inside a triangle, all enclosed within a much larger circle. In fact, the symbol is the only artwork on the front cover. The bookstore's cashier told me this book was one of their most popular New Age sellers. This is the satanic fe symbol featured prominently on the cover of the New Age book The Mark by Maurice Nichol. As it turned out, the book is mostly full of mysteriously garbled esoteric nonsense. Yet a careful reading enables the reader to glean what the author Maurice Nichol was attempting to convey to his New Age readership concerning the mark. Nichol, a British psychiatrist and student of occultist Carl Jung, Revelation 13:16 prophesies that the Antichrist will cause all to receive a mark in their forehead or right hand. The strange illustration showing a mark in the left hand is from the popular New Age book Children of the Dawn. So back to the other part. Nickel, a British psychiatrist and student of occultist Carl Jung, Gurdjieff, and Alspensky, emphasize his belief that if a person is not transformed into a New Age man through a fiery evolution of the mind, he misses the mark. What is necessary, he says, is that a new will be acquired by the inner man independent of any external God. How is this new will to be acquired? Nickel provides the standard New Age answer. The ancient mysteries taught at Eleusis and Attica and elsewhere were called finishings, perfectings. Their significance was to complete man through gradual instruction and knowledge of divine truth. Nichols' teaching is that the New Age man can only become transformed into a divine being through initiation into the ancient mysteries that first originated in Babylon. This should not surprise us because Bible, Bible prophecy pictures Satan's wicked and perverse last days religious system as mystery religion and as a whore or harlot. Sitting astride the beast, she has a name written on her forehead, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and Abominations of the Earth, Revelation 17.5. This name written on the forehead of the prostitute goddess most certainly has a connection with the name of the beast of Revelation 13. Therefore, it is significant that today's New Age theology conforms to the prophecy, last days, world religion that will, the Bible says, encompass peoples and multitudes and nations. Revelation 17.15 The Mark, a sign of spiritual maturity. Sorry, that's a question. The Mark, a sign of spiritual maturity? Bible prophecy affirms that the whole world will worship the beast. He will not have to force the vast majority to take his mark. There's a picture here that says, This startling picture is used in magazine ads for Estera, a New Age cult. They will want the mark because it will signify their arrival as an exalted man-god and full-fledged member of the great and noble Aquarian race. Already New Age propaganda touts the mark as a sign of the spiritually and mentally advanced person. An ad in New Age magazines inviting people to write in for information about Astara, a New Age cult, addresses its appeal to the person who is different and unique. It asks, are you an adventurous seeker of advanced ideas? Do you want to grow in spiritual understanding? And finally, do you want to feel and possibly experience in yourself what the great sages and seers of all time have known? The individual who gets hooked on this, on this, on all this high-sounding spiritual propaganda and writes for a star's free booklet, 
Finding your place in the golden age will undoubtedly discount the picture that first focuses attention on the ad. It's a picture of a man, obviously an advanced thinker type, with a glittering light, lighted star emblazoned on his forehead. The Mark of Saint Germain Elizabeth Clare Prophet's false Christ, Count Saint Germain, also has been said to have a name written on his forehead. One of the principal advocates of the teaching of Saint Germain, Guy W. Ballard, founder of the I Am movement, first wrote of this mark on the forehead of the mystical Saint Germain. Later, Prophet related the count to her supporters in a book about the evolution of the New Age movement through the centuries. Calling Saint Germain that great cosmic master, Prophet describes him as having the word victory written on his brow. The cosmic master, she comments, reminds people of the ancient command to obey the law of one, of karma, and of the importance of his ascended masters of light. The mystical spirit who comes as the Count Saint Germain is also recognized by a number of other leaders as the New Age Messiah. Some claim that it is Saint Germain, along with Zhuo Kou, the Tibetan, who is responsible for the newfound interest among New Agers in crystal powers. The worldwide reawakening of awareness, awareness of the benefits which accrue from the use of quartz crystals is largely due to the combined efforts of two of these illumined souls, Count de Saint Germain and the Master Zhuo Kou, who also is known as a Tibetan master. One New Age authority, Edmund Harold, provides information that this same Saint Germain has been reincarnated before as the Chinese philosopher Lao Tse, as the legendary Merlin at King Arthur's court, and as English scientist Roger Bacon. Elizabeth Clare Prophet says that Saint Germain is now assisted by Master Jesus in his work on Earth and in the invisible spirit world. According to Elizabeth Clare Prophet and her church Universal and Triumphant, Saint Germain is the hierarch of the Aquarian Age. He supposedly began his most recent campaign to usher in the New Age Kingdom on January 1st, 1987. His purpose is to bring to pass an earthly kingdom of great peace, happiness, and prosperity, ruled by him personally with supreme justice and wisdom. Prophet teaches that Saint Germain comes to initiate us. He comes to the fore as the Lord of the seventh ray and age. He comes to initiate us in the gift of prophecy and the gift of the working of miracles that we might foresee by the spirit of the prophets what is coming to us and turn the tide. <coughs> What's more, as part of his initiation, this false Christ, Saint Germain, is said to be sealing enlightened human beings in their foreheads, stumping across American city after city in 1987 to promote the coming revolution in higher consciousness. Elizabeth Clare Prophet invites the public to come hear messages from the saints and adepts of the East and West, especially to hear the exalted Saint Germain. Don't miss this rare opportunity to experience a dictation from an ascended master and to receive Saint Germain's transfer of light, personally to each one present by the Emerald Matrix, the sealing of the servants of God in their foreheads. Revelation 7, in the third eye, be there and enter the Aquarian Age. It is important we go to the scriptures for an understanding of the sealing of the servants of God in their forehead, referenced by prophet. Revelation 7 refers to the sealing of God's 144,000 chosen to be saved out of the nation of Israel during the tribulation period in the last days. These are Jews, not New Agers, who are to be sealed. What's more, they are not to receive a literal mark as the New Age applies, but instead, these 144,000 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel will believe in Jesus Christ and receive His Holy Spirit. In context, the Holy Spirit is a seal of God in man's mind, as Paul so aptly described in Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, by whom ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The sealing of the servants of God in their foreheads in Revelation 7 is clearly understood when we go to the original. The original Greek word used in the New Testament for seal Fragizo. This word means security or preservation by implication to keep or seal up. Therefore, those whom God infills with His Holy Spirit are secure and preserved by Him until the coming of the Lord Jesus. There's a picture and it says, This is said to be what Count Saint Germain, the New Age Christ, appears like in visions in his New Age disciples. If someday in the future a New Age pastor or teacher attempts to convince you to take a mark on the forehead, the biblical response is to tell these false deceivers that you are already sealed, having received the Holy Spirit within. Reject the mark which is permanently inscribed on the outside of the body, 
And if they lyingly refer to Revelation 7 to persuade you, reply that this seal is the Holy Spirit to be given to the 144,000 Jews converted to Christ during the tribulation period. <clears throat> Saint Germain, yet another false Christ. It should be noted that Saint Germain is said to come from the central sun, where Sanat Kumara, the Great One, lives. Saint Germain and all others in the spirit realm worship the Sanat Kumara as their god. As I pointed out in Dark Secrets of the New Age, which I might put up myself, Sanat is simply the same the name Satan spelled with a slight transposing of letters to confuse the initiated, the uninitiated. What we have here is simply another false Christ who comes direct from the spirit world to initiate us, just as the Bible prophesies. He comes not as an ordinary man, but as a miracle worker. Revelations 13, 14, Daniel 11, 28, 36, 2 Thessians 2, 8 through 10 to initiate mankind. The teaching by his New Age disciples that on St. Germain's forehead is written a name, Victory, is blasphemous because it signifies Satan's insane goal of achieving victory over God. Whether or not the real beast of Revelation will have this particular name marked on his forehead or require it to be etched on everyone's forehead or hand we cannot say. Most probably this is just an idle victory boast on the part of a demon. The New Age Manual of Initiation the Lucius Trust also teaches of the mark of the false New Age Savior. The Lucius Trust, formerly Lucifer Publishing, has actually published an 819-page manual detailing the coming initiation of mankind. Entitled The Rays and the Initiations, this complicated text uses language strange and unfamiliar to all except the most sophisticated of New Age students. However, its understanding is essential for us to truly decipher the dark plans of Satan's demonic forces because this manual unfolds specific instructions on the initiation and mark that is to be given to all mankind. Masking the identity of Lucifer by portraying him as the one initiator whose star shone forth, this atrocious manual declares, Let the disciple learn to use the hand in service. Let him seek the mark of the messenger and let him learn to see with the eye which looks out from between the two. The rays and in initiations also reveals that the disciple being initiated may learn the inmost mystery only after he comprehends the first letter of the word which has been imparted or the hidden name. Alice Bailey's spirit guide who dictated to her this new age initiation manual arrogantly remarked that it was safe to openly expound upon these plans and details for the initiation ceremony and the mark and to publish the manual. The general public won't understand it anyway due to the concealed meaning and hidden language. These instructions will, therefore, go out to the general public who will not understand, but thus the needed teaching will be preserved. The demon author of the rays and the initiations also revealed that his manual is being given out now so that it will be in the hands of the future New Age disciples around the world and ready for widespread use towards the end of the century. If this demonic timetable holds true, that is, if God allows this chronology, the Luciferic initiation could be ushered in universally on a mandatory basis within a decade or so. The Fiery Five-Pointed Star We also find references to, references to the mark by a number of other old New Age authorities, usually veiled beneath a flood of confusing esoteric language so that hopefully only the, un, the informed insider is able to understand the meaning. For example, Jeffrey Hodson's the hidden wisdom in the Holy Bible, mentions that a white and fiery pentagram, a five-pointed satanic star symbol, flashes out about, about the head of the Hierophant, initiate, when a valid initiation rite is to be performed. Joao Cole, the Tibetan master, also speaks of a five-pointed star, the pentagram, being used as an initiation sign to signify that the individual becomes one with the force. I will discuss the significance of the pentagram and other symbols in chapters 5 and 6, and especially in chapter 14, when the Luciferic initiation is described and its chilling mysteries are uncovered and laid bare. Trendy Tattoos Conditioning the Minds of Youth Satan is laboring mightily now in all quarters to condition mankind so that when his false Christ gives the order, the whole world will willingly and enthusiastically volunteer to receive the mark. One small but striking example is in a current fad among teenagers of having permanent tattoos needled onto their skin. Some of these tattoos are hideous representations of Lucifer and his demons. Many kids today have been brainwashed through satanic rock music to accept tattoos of bats, dragons, the ram's head, the satanic pentagram and triangles, fiery demons, beastly claws, and lotus blooms. One young lady told me that she and her girlfriends have had tiny rows and lotus designs tattooed on their breasts and inner thigh because they think that's sexy. 
Just a few years ago, this same teenager would not have considered for a moment permanently marring her body with a tattoo. Today, it's the trendy in thing. Someday soon, this young lady and tens of millions of others conditioned like her will be fed a lie by the government and by their churches. They will be led to believe that the permanent mark on their forehead or hand symbolizes the admirable goals of world peace, religious harmony, and brotherhood. Who in their right mind, people will reason, will refuse to take a mark that stands for world unity and love? Only a miserable misfit, the answer will come back. Mother Mary and her mark. While many of our young people are being encouraged to accept tattoo marks as the fashionable thing to do, thousands of Romans, Roman Catholics around the world are being indoctrinated on the, necessis, the necessity for taking the mark by a spirit who masquerades as the Virgin Mary, Mother of God. An apparition calling itself Mary is appearing with regularity these days. Elizabeth Clare Prophet claims that Mother Mary came to her in a vision and even gave her a New Age rosary for today's Catholics. In Yugoslavia, Mary is said to have appeared to six young children with a startling message that her son was coming soon and that all the world's religions are to unite and prepare for this momentous event. Mary assured her listeners that God can be found in all religions, not just Christianity. I understand that millions of Catholics worldwide actually believe that this spirit in Yugoslavia is the real Mary. The most shocking visitation by the spirit that says it is Mary was in Marienfried, Germany, where it was reported that she came in a vision to a girl, Barbara Roos, R-E-U-S-S. The Mary who showed herself to Barbara Roos spoke of dark, incomprehensible events to transpire. She cautioned that only through her could you find intercession with her son Jesus. Finally, she reportedly delivered this intriguing declaration. I will make preparations for peace. I am the sign of the living God. I place my sign on the foreheads of my children. Now the Bible says that Mary was blessed among women because she was chosen to give birth to Jesus, the Christ child. As Christians, we rightly hold Mary in high esteem. Surely her chast example is one that should be praised and followed by women today. But nowhere in our Bible do we find that Mary is a goddess or that she resides in heaven today honored as the mother of God or the queen of heaven. That she was saved as a disciple of Christ is in the Bible, for she regarded Jesus as her Lord and Savior. We also read in scripture that Mary recognized her own low estate as a mere human, being mightily blessed by the Lord. The Lord. See Luke 146-55. No wonder this wonderful and good woman exclaimed, exclaim, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Luke 1, 46. The Bible also makes clear that there is only one mediator between man and God, Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2, 5, 6. Not Mary, nor a dead saint, no matter how glorious were their achievements while on earth or in heaven, only one mediator, mediator, the Son of God. Once we understand this unarguable biblical truth, we must reject the many Marys that are buzzing around the globe. In Yugoslavia, Mexico, Spain, France, Germany, the United States, and elsewhere. These are demons come to lie and deceive. We must keep our eyes fixed on the Jesus of the Bible and not accept either a counterfeit Jesus or a fake Mary. Regrettably, in the days to come, many Catholics will line up to receive the mark, convinced that Mary, the Immaculate Mother of God, has so ordained this ritual. They will believe the lie, that the mark is to be given the true people of God while those who refuse it are people of evil. Thus will Satan turn truth on its head. The third eye as the mark. The Hindu gurus, so prominent in the New Age, first brought into America and the West the belief that each person has a hidden, third eye, located in the middle of the forehead, just above the central point where the eyebrows meet. The Greek myth of the one-eyed cyclops creature was an ancient variation of this teaching. But the real foundation of the third eye doctrine is in the Egyptian mystery religion of the goddess. Again, we return to Revelation 17 and to Mystery Babylon, mother of harlots. The Egyptian priesthood taught first that Mat, the goddess of truth and judgment, possessed the third eye. Later, the central text of the Egyptian mystery religion was revised and a male god, Horus, son of the goddess, was given the all-seeing eye. It is the mysterious all-seeing eye of Horus that is pictured inside the capstone of the pyramid found on a U.S. dollar bill. Horus was an armed warrior deity known as the Great Sun God. Some mystical and occult teachers in the New Age preach that Horus is the bringer of the Aquarian Age, that he is a living God who will restore peace, light, and love to mankind. In today's New Age and Hindu philosophies, the body is made up of certain energy points or chakras. Two important chakras are the one in the forehead and the other in the palm of the right hand. Note that these are the same body sites 
revealed in the Bible as where the mark of the beast will be taken. What's more, the New Age body chakra points are considered initiation sites, with the individual receiving additional psychic and other godlike powers as each energy point on his body is opened up to allow the flow of energy from the universal force field. New Age teachers call the forehead chakra the third eye, or the Ajna center. This energy point on the forehead is thought to be the passport to higher consciousness, or godhood, for a person. The Ajna center is also said to be site of the sacred fire. Today's Hindu monks, swamis, gurus, and spiritual seekers literally mark themselves over the forehead with a bit of red, yellow, or white powder or paste on this center as a sign. The New Age and Hindu teaching of an energy point between one's eyes on the forehead is a precursor of the mark of the beast. The mark as a sign of awakened godhood. In the Hidden Wisdom in the Holy Bible, Volume 1, it is argued that man has now advanced racially to a point where he is able to use the third eye lying beneath his forehead. New Age men, the author suggests, are spiritual gains now, awakening from their long slumber. Modern man becoming giants once more, if only as yet in man... In mo sorry, modern man becoming giant once more, if only as yet in mind, finds his closed third eye opening once more. Man's inherent psychic faculties, his innate seership, is no longer a dimly remembered racial power. It is now recognized as an almost universal and, a, and an active power which has been christened extrasensory perception, or ESP. One can easily envision a future day when religious authorities spread the wonderful news to the congregations that this new mark on the forehead or on the hand will open up incredible vistas of psychic, godlike opportunity. It would be proposed that a person initiated into the mysteries of the New Age religion and given the mark will have his forehead or hand chakras open so that he will begin to receive a mighty flow of energizing power into his spirit. When that terrible day arrives, society will be taught to revere the man with the mark and despise the man without it. A man who has the mark will rank high in social status. He will be respected as an advanced thinker, a person of higher consciousness, and a fully qualified member of the superior Aquarian race. He will be marked as a spiritual, spiritual giant of the New Age. Chapter 4 His number is 666 Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Revelation thirteen eighteen. The number six 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 has to do with the triangular balancing of forces towards the close of the eye. It deals with the greater initiation. Alice Beatty, a treatise on cosmic fire. Bible prophecy tells us that the beast will have a number, 666, and that by this number he will control and ravage mankind. Once the beast or antichrist has complete supremacy and power over all on the planet, he will institute a commercial system so that no one can buy or sell unless he has allied himself with the established religion of the beast. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Revelations 13:17. For centuries, people have pondered over the mysterious meaning of Revelation 13. In chapter 13, verse 18, we are alert, alerted that few will be able to understand and interpret the meaning of this passage. Here is wisdom, the verse begins, Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. What is needed for understanding is the wisdom that only the Holy Spirit can impart to man. God is wisdom. He is gracious to his servants and pro provides understanding to them that is withheld from the world at large. The natural man will never be capable of comprehending Revelation 13, 18. Only the child of God imbued with his wisdom might unravel the mystery that is unfolded. 666 is the number of the false Christ. We start our examination of the dreaded number of the beast by noting that 666 is the number of the counterfeit, counterfeit or false Christ. This is the wicked man whom the whole earth shall worship, Revelation 13:8 the satanically energized world leader who will go up against the people of God and eventually conquer them. He will establish a one world order where Lucifer is exalted and where everything that is godly is debased and expunged. Daniel 11. He will be the Antichrist and he will be a man, for it is the number of a man. To the warped minds of the Antichrist and his deluded New Age followers, the number 666 will be magically transformed into a holy number of great spiritual significance. It is of paramount importance that we understand this. Until the New Age world religion recently began to flourish, 
There was a common understanding, even among the unsaved, that the number 666 signified something abhorrent and utterly evil. However, in the new age, this number will be given a fresh image. Its loathsomeness and Paul shall be covered up. It will receive a fresh coat of glittery paint and be adorned with honor. The number 666 will be seen as a powerful symbol of man's ultimate ascendance to godhood. Already, we can observe this ongoing transformation of the number of the beast. New Age leaders have already begun to condition and re-educate their disciples and students on the proper understanding of the number 666 for the Aquarian Age. 6 equals the number of divine light. Alice Bailey and Lucius Trust have put out the word to their hundreds of thousands of followers that the number 6 is the number of light. It is the number of Shambhala, the supposed heavenly city or realm where the New Age Christ, Lord, Maitreya and his hierarchy reside and from where they operate on planet Earth. To this center we give the name Shambhala, the component letters of which are numer numerically S-H-A-M-B-A-L-L-A -L -L -A, or 1814213331. This word equals the number 24, which in its turn equals 6. Bailey adds the revealing information that the number six is the goal of the initiatory process. She writes that this number is a medium through which man can be initiated by deity or Sanat Kumara, who is said to be the divine superior of the New Age Christ, Lord Maitreya. The number six, Bailey notes, is therefore the number of idealism and of that driving force which makes mankind move forward upon the path in response to the vision and press upward towards the light. It is in reality devotion to an unseen goal and an unswerving recognition of the objective. Like most of the material that Lucius Trust publishes, the above exemplifies the strange phraseology one finds in occult writings. After all, the world occult means hidden, dark, secret, mysterious, and enigma. But it is easy to decipher what Bailey is telling her disciples here. She is saying that the number six keeps the initiates on the path toward their eventual godhood and that they must press on in devotion to their unseen goal which is mer merger with Lucifer, the true but hidden god of the New Age. This is their ultimate hidden objective, to unite with Satan. Thus, Bailey alleges that the number six has divine qualities. She remarks that in the ancient book on numbers, the initiate is defined as the one who has experienced and expressed 666 and found it not, and has thus found himself upon the way. Translated, this simply means that once the individual totally and without reservation accepts the number 666 as an integral, inseparable part of his spiritual reality, he is transformed into a god. And as a god, he no longer needs assistance from the New Age Christ and his hierarchy to discover the way to perfection and godhood. He has made it. In a popular phrase of Werner Erhard's est, the initiate who accepts and embraces the number 666 has his own can ex exuberantly exclaim, I found it. What he has found, of course, is Satan. Anyone who is initiated and takes the number of the beast will become one with the darkest being who has ever traveled the airways, the prince of the power of the air. Satan is the deity, the god, of the new age. So Alice Bailey is entirely correct when she states that the taking of this, the number of initiation, 666 according to Revelation 13, enables the person to blend his individual will with the divine will. 6. The number of dark angels and the cosmic force. Jual Cole, the Tibetan master, adds further New Age clarity to the meaning of the number of the beast in a revealing book, A Treatise on Cosmic Fire. In this publication, we find that the triangle, a satanic symbol, and the force are both linked to the number 666. Cole also informs us that the number 6 is the number of the Deva evolution, Deva kingdom. To the Hindu and New Ager, a Deva is an angel, and a Deva kingdom is where angels reside. To the Christian, the word diva also means angel, a dark angel of Lucifer. Though he perverts God's truth, Cole is not ignorant of Bible prophecy. He states that black magicians work with certain great entities, six in number, who are spoken of, for instance, in the Christian Bible as having the number 666. They came in, he adds, on a stream of cosmic force. The number 666 as a destructive force. But what exactly does the number 666 signify for the future of man and the planet Earth? In answering this question, Joel Cole explains the laws of karma, reincarnation, and rebirth. He says that at the end of the present age, or cycle, in order to bring in the new age, certain destructive forces will be unleashed on the world. These forces, which take a triangular shape, 
constitute heavenly karma or cosmic justice. There will be a great initiation of all mankind, Cole reveals, and a number 666 will be instrumental in both carrying out cosmic justice, it will be destructive, and initiating mankind into the new age. According to D.K. Joel Cole, the number 666 has to do with the triangular balancing of forces towards the close of the cycle. It deals with the greater initiation. D.K. forecasts a planetary kundalini transformation, which will work destruction on the world. We can see the transparent workings of Satan in the smooth, deceitful words of this demon messenger to the New Age named Joel Cole. It is crystal clear that, first, the plan calls for the number 666 to be used in the initiation of man by the New Age Christ into the mystery of iniquity. Second, those who refuse the mark and do not have the number of the beast will be destroyed. Initiation is therefore the process in which the Antichrist will weed out his disciples from those Christians who worship the true God. Six equals the number of the New Age Christ who wages war against Christians. This is well explained in the classic book Coming World Changes by Harriet and F. Tomer, F. Homer Curtis, founders of the Order of the Christian Mystics. They speak first of the arrival of, on earth of the long expected great teacher, i.e. the Antichrist. The spiritual giant, the New Age Christ, will make war with the forces of evil Christians and overcome them. The battle has already begun. For this is the time of struggle to overcome the evils which the race as a whole has outlived, yet which is not fully conquered and redeemed. Note that the Curtis' statement that the evils which the great teacher wages conflict against are evils which the race as a whole has outlived, yet which is not fully conquered and redeemed. What they are saying is that all the world is to be of the higher consciousness Aquarian race except for a few holdbacks, the Christian minority. This Christian minority is the enemy who must be challenged and overcome. The campaign of the New Age to battle and conquer the people of God and to use the number of the beast 666 to cull out or separate these victims, victims will fulfill Bible prophecy. Daniel prophesied that the last day's world ruler or king would wear, on to, wear out the saints, saints of the Most High, and I shall be given into his hand until time and times and the dividing of time. Daniel 7.25 Just as Dual Cole, the Tibetan master, threatened, we find in the word of God the prophecy that the last day shall bring destruction to the whole world as the Antichrist goes all out in his attempt to overcome and dominate the people of God. Read of the vision given Daniel of this final world kingdom. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. Daniel 7.23 in the book of Daniel, we also see that the beast, the great last day's dictator or ruler, shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, 824. But in the end, he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken, 825. Who is the prince of princes? Jesus Christ. So we know that God's people shall suffer tremendous persecution from the beast with the number 666, but Christ will have the final victory. Again, I speak of the real Christ, Jesus, the Son of God. For the New Age has its own counterfeit Christ. He is the one who will bring with him the mysterious number of the beast and force it on the world. The counterfeit Christ is evidently the one acknowledged by F. Homer and Harriet Curtis. They claim that their great teacher of the New Age is, in fact, the New Age Christ who is to come. And what is the number of their New Age Christ, the grace, this great teacher? According to the Curtises, the number six is both the number of Christ and also of unrest. It symbolizes the mighty struggle of the Christ force to penetrate evil and manifest itself. The Christ force of the New Age will indeed manifest itself in the person of the Antichrist. These people of Satan, the ungodly citizens of the planet who willingly receive the mark or his number or his name, will temporarily be the victors until the return of the real Christ, Lord Jesus. But this isn't the way the New Age sees it. Their Christ, the man with the number six, will lead the Christ force, note the word, note the word force, to victory. The defeated army will be swallowed up and a new and purified land shall rise out of the waters. The victors will remain as the seed of the new race to people, to people the new land. Out of the waters of affliction there shall rise a new and greater humanity with true brotherhood, love, peace, and harmony as its watchword. Here once again we see the life of Satan designed to lure and seduce men's mind. Serve him instead of God and victory will be yours. You'll be the seed of a new race of man-gods, and the world will enjoy brotherhood, love, peace, and harmony. But the devil, the devil fails to explain that a price will be exacted for this. 
Everyone who has received a mark will be told that to assure their salvation and to demonstrate their divine powers, they must serve as warriors in the great battle against the Christian resistance forces. They must become accomplices of the New Age Christ. As gods, it is their responsibility. It is humanity itself that must save itself through the manifestation of God powers, else humanity could never gain self-mastery. 666 equals the number of the great teacher. We can see then that the Christ force of the New Age is the combined forces of Satan, his Antichrist leader, the so-called great teacher, and the hundreds of millions who will gladly receive the mark, worship the image, and pay homage to the number of the great teacher. In her explicitly detailed book outlining the plan for a one world New Age religion and government, when humanity comes of age, Britain's Vera Alder discusses the coming, the coming great teacher. She says that as soon as he has consolidated world power, he will form and head a spiritual research panel that will evaluate and combine all the world's religions and teachings, the occultic myst ancient wisdom and mystery teachings. This synthesis will, will be given out to the world as a New Age Bible. The research panel will develop the new Bible of the world religion and will be the basis of future education. Benjamin Cream's demon guide, Lord Maitreya, also, has also declared himself the world teacher. Cream has published a series of messages which he says were dictated to him telepathically by the Lord Maitreya and what he calls an overshadowing process. In one of these images, Maitreya is quoted as follows. Good evening, my dear friends. I am pleased indeed to have this opportunity to speak to you in this way. My aim is to make my presence in the world at the earliest possible moment and so begin my work. My plan is to release into the world a certain teaching which will show men that there exists a new approach to living, a new way forward into the future time. What is this teaching which Cream's Lord Maitreya says he will release into the world? Undoubtedly, it will be a teaching that denies the, denies the gospel of Jesus Christ, for Benjamin Cream has said that Maitreya, not Jesus, is the Christ. Another significant element of this teaching will be the doctrine that the number 666, the image of the beast, and his name are holy. Why the number 666? To uncover the secrets behind the mysterious number 666, we can go to two valuable sources of information. First, there is the ages old practices of numerology. Second, we can profitably look at the very roots of the number 6, examining its dark spiritual origins. Numerology, the science of numbers. God has his own system of numbers. For, for example, in the Bible 7, it is the perfect number of completion, and the number 12 has great significance because Jesus 12 chose 12 disciples. However, numerology was perverted into an occult science and an ungodly practice in ancient Babylon. The New Age movement has remo removed, revived this ancient occult science of numerology. New Age minister Jeffrey Hodson, a bishop in the apost apostate liberal Catholic Church, writes that numbers can be used as symbols and that by the study of numbers, one may learn the fundamental laws of the universe and men. According to Hodson, every number has a certain power. This power results in an occult connection. Hodson states that the number six is a symbol of man, balance, equilibrium, and harmony. In the New Age understanding, this means the Earth's purification and cleansing so that our planet's karma can be balanced and harmonized. Hodson also writes that six represents the age of psychic, godlike powers in man, psychology, divination, telepathy, and so forth. In a dictionary of symbols, the author describes the number six as compromising the union, comprising the union of the two occult triangles of fire and water. According to this authoritative source, the number six is also, as Hodson remarked, a symbol of balancing. Six equals the number of the mother goddess. In ancient Babylon, sexual intercourse was revered as a myst mystical rite in which a man and woman were yoked with the gods. From the, this religious practice and doctrine came the Hindu practice of tantric yoga, which also means to be yoked. Tantric yoga, or ritualistic sex, is today a widely popular practice among some in the New Age. The religion of Babylon was primarily the worship of the mother goddess, who was later pictured in Revelation 17 as the great whore of Babylon. Satan's last days world religion, a revived form of Babylonianism. In this religion, six was considered the number symbolizing sacramental sexual ecstasy in which the participants achieved union with the divine universe and with the mother goddess. 
A triple six, six six six, was a magic number of the goddess Ishtar, which also called the triple Aphrodite, because in her pers personage was the unholy trinity of the mother, son, mother, father, son. Six equals the number of the sacred prostitute. Feminist New Age researcher Barbara Walker notes that the Egyptians who worshipped the mother goddess considered three, six, and seven their most sacred numbers. Three stood for the triple goddess, six meant her union with the father god, and seven stood for the seven planetary spheres. The miraculous number 666, as Walker describes it, was very, very holy in the Egyptian religion of the goddess. Walker describes Ishtar, the mother, the great mother goddess of Babylon, as follows. Babylonian star, the great goddess who appears in the Bible as Ashtoreth, Anath, Asherah, the queen of heaven. She was also the great whore described in Revelation 17.5 as Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Man communed with her through the sexual rites of her harlot priestess. Says. It is a tragic fact that Solomon, a wise and great king, nevertheless failed God in his old age. The declining monarch disobeyed the Lord, taking for his brides younger women, possibly of great and alluring beauty, who are not of the tribes of Israel but of foreign peoples. Accordingly, these women worshipped the mother goddess and were able to turn Solomon away from the true God and persuade him to bring the perversions of the goddess religion into the temple. Apparently, as part of this pagan worship, Solomon required the priests of the temple to pay him 666 talents of gold per year. 1 Kings 10.14 This was perhaps payment and recognition for his allowing these wicked priests to charge clients for the sacred services of the temple prostitutes. It is significant to note that when Solomon had gone into sin through worship of the goddess Ashtoreth, 1 Kings 11.5, the Lord was angered, angered and caused dissension and troubles to visit the land of Israel, 1 Kings 11.9-14. Virgo, the Celestial Virgin The mother goddess was at the head of the mystery religion, thus Mystery Babylon. Hers was the religion in which temple prostitutes were employed as priestesses to initiate candidates into the mysteries. The religion was also marked by its beliefs in astrology and occult science which originated in Babylon. The goddess was the original Virgo of the zodiac signs. Ironically, the sign of, the, of Virgo represents the celestial virgin. To many in today's New Age movement, the symbol of Virgo, and in fact the entire field of astrology, has profound religious significance. New Age occult astrology is not the fun and games of your daily horoscope in the newspaper. It is serious business, a field imbued with heavy theological and doctrinal overtones. In one of Alice Bailey's many books published by the Lucius Trust, she mentions the astro astrological sign Virgo, informing her New Age readers that Virgo symbolizes the goddess principle in that. The symbology of Virgo concerns the whole goal of the evolutionary process which is to shield, nurture, and finally reveal the hidden spiritual reality. A serious Bible student can easily gain a keen understanding of what Alice Bailey means by the hidden, hidden spiritual reality that will finally be revealed. All that's necessary is to pay close attention to other statements Bailey makes about the astrological Virgo, the Divine Woman. Another unique feature of Virgo is that it has a triple symbol. This underlies the, event, the spiritual theory of triangles. It is through the fusing and blending of the three planetary energies that Earth will be transformed into a sacred planet. In New Age astrology, Virgo thus represents the triangle, which as I have explained, is an ancient satanic symbol much in vogue today among New Agers and occultists. As was said of the mother goddess of the mystery Babylon religion, Virgo, her astrological twin, has a triple aspect symbolized by the triangle. The New Age leadership preaches that the force underlying the triangle symbol will soon transform Earth into a magical and sacred New Age kingdom. Is Virgo, according to New Age teachers, connected with the fateful number 666? Yes, indeed. Virgo's is the sixth sign, Bailey writes. She readily acknowledges that this frightening number is called the number of the beast, but she assures us that this is okay and is nothing to be alarmed about. This idea seems to have a horrible fascination for many, but what it really means is that Virgo is a symbol of the triplicity, six on the physical plane, six on the emotional plane, six on the mental plane. So Virgo, the goddess, is acknowledged as represented numero numerologically by three sixes. Six, six, six is her number, the number of the beast. The beastly son of the goddess comes forth. We know from Revelation 13, however, that the Antichrist will be a man, a false man-god, and not a woman-goddess. 
But what we have been talking about is not the Antichrist, but the ungodly worldwide religious system he will head, Mystery Babylon. This is what the New Age goddess Astrology's Virgo represents. From this perverse New Age religion, New Age mystery religion will spring forth the sun. He will be Satan in the form of a man, a man beast who leads a religious beast system. He will be the Antichrist who rules and terrorizes a tribulation plagued world. Alice Bailey clearly understands Bible prophets, at least from the viewpoint of her master Satan. Thus, Bailey abuses and twists prophetic references to reveal that Virgo, the symbol of the New Age spirituality, will indeed bring forth the sun. Behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch, Zechariah 3.8. One symbol of Virgo is the woman with the branch of fruit in her arms. Remember also the prophecy of Isaiah upon which our New Testament is based. And a virgin shall conceive and bring forth the son. What son will Virgo, the goddess model for the New Age world religion, bring forth? Certainly not Jesus Christ, the Messiah to whom the prophets Zechariah and Isaiah referred. He came forth 2,000 years ago. He is the son of God and is himself God. No, the New Age religion, the religion of the goddess 666 and of the beast and his mark, will bring forth the son of perdition. He will come, Paul told us in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, 10. After the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Is Saturn the Antichrist? Could the son of the mother goddess, the son of perdition who is the Antichrist, be a modern day version of Saturn, Saturn, the great sun god of Rome? If we are to believe the astonishing teachings of prominent New Age religious teachers, Saturn is to come to life and is fated to become the great world ruler for the New Age kingdom. Saturn had his dark side too. He was called the underworld's lord of death. The Hindus worship him under the name Shiva the Destroyer. Babylonian and Chaldean astrologers called him a seal, the son of the night. A seal is today the name of the spirit whom many witches and Satanists frequently conjure, conjure up to do their bidding. Sri Aurobindo, a Hindu guru well known in the New Age, affirms that Saturn is represented by the number six. According to Aurobindo, this is because the planet Saturn is sixth of the nine planets in distance from the sun. Aurobindo also relates Saturn to the mother goddess and her trinity nature commenting that the six in the scale of the trinity is the point wherein the mother makes her appearance. Saturn was also recognized by Alice Bailey as an astrological symbol packed with deep meaning for the New Age future. She says that Saturn will rule the age of Aquarius and that Saturn gives us discipline. Saturn opens for us the door of opportunity. Saturn, through spiritual exercises and trials, strengthens our spiritual muscles and enables us to emerge out of darkness into light. There's more, also, to reveal about the New Age's Saturn. Vera Alder provides us with the key to understanding as she discloses that in the chaos period to come on planet Earth, it is Saturn who will bring all the pain and pressure. Pain and pressure are born upon this planet from the planet Saturn. Alder also makes the astonishing disclosure that Saturn, the New Age codename for the false Christ, is none other than Satan. The, Sa the Saturnian spirit, Satan, let us not forget, and sold the third major great third great major or primary ray of deity and wields the great laws of cause and effect, action and reaction, karma. Therefore, the world initiation to which we are drawing near today is being brought to birth by a universal access of pain and of pressure, to which humanity is responding responding with widespread action, leading naturally to initiation. 666 Cosmic Fire, the Third Eye Over and over we see references to the number 666 in New Age books, magazines, reports, and speeches. We especially see this dreadful number being used in reference to the third eye, the point on the forehead between the eyes where energy forces and light are claimed to enter from the universal force field, the impersonal god of the New Age. This is the third eye of the Hindus and Buddhists as well. The New Agers and the Hindus call the site where the invisible third eye is located the Agni, or Ajna Center. I found some remarkable information when I researched the doctrinal and historical foundations of the Hindu religion in regard to this teaching about a third eye. It turns out that Agni was the Hindu male fire god who was a sexual partner of the mother goddess. Symbolically, Agni was represented as fire from heaven, lightning. Ancient peoples later began to call him by his actual name, Lucifer. When you take Agni's mark, you are in reality taking Lucifer's mark. 
So when the New Age leadership teaches that the Agni Center is the third eye in which cosmic fire and light enter to bring inner transformation to the initiate, what they are referring to is simply the flooding luciferic energy and thoughts into the person's mind. It is, al it is ultra important that we recall that Jesus described Lucifer in this manner. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Luke 10.18 Could this give us an indication of the correct interpretation of Revelation 13.13? 13, 13? In that prophecy, the false prophet who makes the beast is able to do great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Is the fire that comes down the cosmic fire of the new age? Amazingly, this is exactly what Alice Bailey says is the case in her eye-opening a treatise on cosmic fire. Bailey, however, maintains this cosmic fire originates from Shambhala, the invisible New Age spirit world. It is conceivable that at a future time, as a New Age disciple is being initiated, the celebrants will observe the wonder of a satanic stream of fire or lightning come down from above. It will enter the initiate's forehead exactly where the mark has been taken. This event would instill awe and great reverence in those who see it, fulfilling completely the prophecy of Revelation 13.13. 13. In reading the Keys of Enoch, we begin to see just how important to New Age initiation is both the number 666 and the teaching of the third eye. Its author tells us that 666 is the numerical sequence used by the heavenly beings to communicate with man, sending and receiving spiritual information. We are also told that this communication is done through the use of specific light and sound harmonics by means of a pyramidal force created over the third eye. By using this heavenly sequence 6-6-6-666, it is explained that the individual's thoughts are elevated as if they are a seed crystal so that he can commune directly with the councils of light in the heavens. The Taming of New Age Man by the Beast Beneath all the deceptive New Age phraseology in the Keys of Enoch, we discover the author's hidden occult message. The mark on the forehead, the third eye, is a communication point or symbol between Satan and New Age Man. Satan can e communicate easily with New Age man because after he has received the mark, he's Satan's personal property. He is marked for eternal damnation by his hellish father. Of course, New Age man won't understand this until it's far too late. The natural man cannot understand the things of God. He cannot discern truth. Fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom, and New Age man claims to fear no one. Therefore, the New Ager is easily convinced that the number 666 is not the number of the beast but of a New Age savior and great teacher to come, and he can be persuaded that the cosmic fire that streams into the so-called chakra or Agni point on his forehead is illumination from the secret hiding place of the ascended masters. After all, he has already swallowed the twin teachings that there is no hell and that there is no Satan and his demons who live there. New Age man has been conditioned to believe the lie, he has been tamed by the beast, and through the propagation of New Age sea teachings in every realm of society and, to, and the proliferation of symbols that are now ceaselessly flooding our consciousness, the whole world is beginning to swallow the lie.